I, I think it's significant and it's important today that after 400 years of silence, God handpicked a humble temple priest, a teenage girl, a carpenter, and some sheep herders to speak to. The angel Gabriel first comes to the temple priest. Fear not. And you'll see a theme through his voice. Fear not, Zachariah. For your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. The only problem is Zechariah is ancient, and Elizabeth is barren. So what were the voices going on in Zechariah's head? Same, they've probably gone through us. I'm too old, I'm, it's too late, it's impossible. Nice try, nice timing, God, on this one. But God's voice was, Zechariah, fear not. Your prayers have been heard. Rejoice. And Zechariah must choose which voice he will listen to. Gabriel then comes to a teenage virgin girl. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. What were the voices going on in Mary's head at this one? This is impossible. I'm going to be shamed. I could be stoned. I might be killed. Joseph will divorce me. Nobody's going to believe it. But what was God's voice? Fear not, Mary. You have found favor with God. And she must decide which voice she would listen to. Then the angel comes, Joseph, son of David, fear not. Fear not. There's a theme here. Fear not to take Mary as your wife, for what is conceived in her is the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the voices in Joseph's head is, you gotta be kidding. This is unbelievable. No one will believe this, and then he does a guy thing. I can fix this. I'll just divorce her quietly. In God's voice, fear not. Take Mary as your wife. You'll raise a son who shall save his people. And he must choose which voice he will listen to. And then the outcast shepherds. Imagine them. They're just out watching the sheep one night. The angel appears. Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For born this day in the city of David, a Savior is Christ the Lord. And the voices in their head. <laughs> we're going to have to stop smoking this local Palestinian loco weed is probably what they were thinking. We need a vacation. No one's going to believe this. But what was God's voice? Fear not. I came to give you great tidings of great joy. And they must choose which voice they will listen to. And every day, we must choose which voice we will listen to. Will we listen to the voice of our culture who tells us not to fear not, but to fear? With 24-hour news cycles skewing our reality, depression and fear seem to be at an all-time high. Yet the angels told all four, fear not. Why? Because fear from the evil one wants to rule the world. Or will we listen to the other voices that compete in our heads? Voices from our past, voices from others. You're not good enough. You're too old. You're too young. You're not smart. You had your chance. You'll always be this way. You see, the voice of the culture and the voices of the past and voices of others were telling Zachariah, you're too old, Mary, you're too young, Joseph, you're too poor, shepherds, you're not acceptable. But God's voice is different. And that's why we are to capture every thought and say, is this from God or is this from the enemy? You see, God's voice is different. God tells them as well as he tells you and I, and maybe you just needed to hear this today, fear not. Your prayers have been heard. You're favored. You're chosen. Rejoice. 